So, welcome back guys. Where do I start? Disappointing defeat on Sunday, to say the least. Personally, for me, I've been feeling terrible for well over a week now. Uh, Norwich was a 50-50 for me, but in the end, I wasn't ever going to turn that one down. Went to the game, enjoyed myself, enjoyed being with the lads. The only thing that was lacking was a result. And I think that's the story of the season, but... I mean, what can you say um, in terms of in terms of how we played? Yeah, not too bad. I thought there were, there was a couple of players that really annoyed me. Uh, John Nolan consistently out of position in the whole game, and Trevor Chalabar so afraid to make a challenge that you know I don't really know why either of those players started against Norwich. To be fair, um, yeah, got a bit of flair in, in, in places, but they just they're not the right players for that game. I mean, it would have started with Bishop and Downs, you know, tenfold over them on, on Sunday. But there you go, that's what happened. And obviously, it wasn't just all about um, the players on Saturday, uh, on Sunday, um, but more about Paul Lambert. And I think, you know, some could, some could say it was a PR stunt. Others could say, you know, he was putting a word in where he, where he had to. But um, some say he was uh, provoked by Ed Witten, the uh, Norwich goalkeeper coach um, we're not quite sure what was said but it led to Paul Lambert being red carded and sent off during the match um, the the terms of a red card are actually being used by the referee on the managers for violent conduct um, we obviously don't know what was said so we can't really talk about any more than that but Lambert standing by what he said and um, he's invited Ed Witten for, a, for another chat uh, behind closed doors but you know, you know this. To be honest, this is menial banner at the moment. Um, it shouldn't be taken any further than that. The FA have charged Paul Lambert at this moment in time. Um, he's he, he said he's going to look at the footage and then go back over it. But as far as that goes, FA decision is is potentially final. Um, but in terms of um, what that means for Paul, yeah, he'll get a fine. I imagine potentially even a touchline ban. But he'll, he'll be in the dugout tomorrow the game against Derby so looking into Derby obviously um, injuries uh, we picked up a massive one on Sunday uh, one that you know is not good for anybody um, but Freddie Sears is uh, now out injured for nine months um, he's not only going to miss the rest of the season but he will miss um, the start of our League One campaign which is which is not good as a player you would have you would imagine would uh, which actually have a um, you know a good shout in our squad for next season, a, a player that you would like to see in the squad still. Um, Chambers still doubtful. Um, he played in the Norwich game. He, he was fit apparently on the Saturday, and and he was able to come into the squad. But in terms of his wrist and his foot, he's still struggling in places. So. Um, we might not see Chambers again tomorrow night, but um, Colin Quainer's likely to come back from, uh, I think it was a thigh strain or something like that, or a hamstring injury that, he'd, that he had, so he'll come back into the squad. Gwion Edwards has um, been suffering. We finally find out about Gwion Edwards, uh, who's not been involved in a, since Atkinson away, but um, he's been suffering with groin problems. So Gwion's uh, potentially going to come back into the squad tomorrow night against Derby. Um, and the big one, James Collins. It doesn't look like we're going to see him for a while. He's, uh, I think he's struggling with hamstrings at the moment. So <clears throat> we're not going to see uh, big uh, Ginger Pele back for a while. Um, well, not at least before Stoke. So um, looking ahead to tomorrow, Derby is a is a, obviously a mean a mean game for us to play. Having just played Norwich, lost four of the last five. Where does that put us in terms of beating the team like Derby? Now, Derby are unbeaten in the last five. Um, got players like Martin Waghorn coming back to Portman Road and for the first time since his £5 million switch in the summer. Ironically, Waghorn himself has scored three and five for... Or is it four and five? He's actually four and five for Derby. And uh, he's, hit, he's hit a purple patch at the, at the right time. He's going to come back to Ipswich. Um, he's going to be the danger man tomorrow night, I would imagine. 
Um, but you've got other players, players that we're, we're well aware of. Tom Lawrence, who's obviously um, lit up the championship while he was on loan at, at Portman Road, a player that we're all fond of, um, a player who Ipswich we're not going to fork out for. Um, but, you know, likewise, another Mick McCarthy signing that came in during his time, a loan signing, but um, one player that Mick McCarthy didn't take a liking to was Jack Marriott. And obviously Jack Marriott went out and left Ipswich. Um, it may have been an experience thing or it may have been like you couldn't see any talent, but you could argue Jack Marriott's had a probably a similar or even better run than Jordan Rhodes has after leaving the Ipswich Sound Academy. And it's gone on to reach the championship, and in his, you know, his maiden season, his return season in the championship, he scored ten goals, which is, you know, no mean feat for for someone who's climbing the league. So, um, you know, if, if if those players keep playing the way they are, and and the the action is as good as good as it looks on telly, then Derby could find themselves in the Premier League, and uh, and players such as Marriott. Waghorn, Lawrence Gill will be playing Premier League football next season and it's not beyond them. Obviously they've got a, a number of good players. Frank Lampard's their manager. Um, you know, he's not got a wealth of experience but what he has got is, you know, he's got experience playing football and playing it the, you know, the best possible way it can happen. So, experience-wise as manager, you know, this is his first season. Um, Derby are, you know, holding up their usual seventh spot They've not bottled the playoffs just yet, but you'd like to see Derby in and around the playoffs. And I think they've got the ability and the, and the players to actually to make the playoffs um, this season. But in terms of where Town are, um, I'd like to say, like after the result on on Sunday, that um, that's basically us. Uh, you know, the season's is, is pretty much over, but. We can't sit here and say that. We've got 15 games left to play. You know, two at home in a row now. With uh, obviously Derby and Stoke, we've got to try and get as many points as we can in those. Uh, you know, in those remaining games. Um, we've only won three and 31, which is astoundingly poor. But you can't really, you can't reverse time. What's done is done. Three wins out of 31 is is worse than relegation for. Unfortunately, um, still, you know, we've picked up seven points from a possible fifteen in the last five home games. I mean, that's the only positive you can really draw from our league form. In terms of uh, what we can do whilst we're in the championship, I think, you know, and I saw Lambert say it today that the youngsters are the future. We need to build around those youngsters. I'd completely agree in that sense. Um, if we were to go down now. We need to galvanise our youngsters. Um, players like James Spree who's coming from Villa. He's been at Barnsley. He's played in a you know centre of excellence such as Barney, uh, Barnsley, where a number of players have come through their academy. And he said today that um, the youngsters here at Ipswich are some of the best he's ever seen in uh, any club he's been at. And you know, you know that's that's a good thing to hear. Now we see um, a number of the youngsters uh, getting some pro contracts this week. Uh, Likely involvement if we were to go down to League One would probably be fifty to sixty percent chance um, involvement this season. I'm not sure. I I really do want some of the youngsters to come in, um, because you know we may not be losing games. You sorry, repeat. We may be losing games, but uh, in terms of protecting the youngsters, I can understand that. But at the same time, why not give them the valuable experience in a championship prior to going down to the uh, to the uh, third division and you know give them you know some starting block to uh, to improve on but yeah who knows um, in terms of who I want to see I want to see yeah Emmanuel and Ken Locks starting to be honest um, I think they've waited long enough I think they've been in and around the first team for about five years constantly replaced they are good enough to play in those positions and they should be playing those positions arguably better than the players that we've had in those positions for the last three or four years and uh, I want to see players like Teddy Bishop and Flynn Downs give, give them plenty more opportunities um, Lancaster obviously coming back in and I think goalkeeping 
is a massive place that we need to improve on. Now, I would like to call for Harry Wright to be given a chance in some aspect when it comes to going in goal for Ipswich Town. Now, we can't say at any point in this season that our goalkeeper has saved us in, in any way um, from losing you know, losing a game, drawing, winning. I, I can't really think of a moment where a keeper has kept us in the game. So in that sense, what, what have we got to lose by putting the youngster in goal? Um, he would only gain experience, um, you know, in terms of what, you know, family, family wise, his, his dad's obviously Richard Wright. He's got, you know, rich history of Ipswich Town and, you know, he could only benefit from the experience. So chuck him in, in my opinion. Um, in terms of youngsters, if you've got any ideas of, or, or any players that you want to see in the first team before the end of the season, before we're likely to be relegated, then leave a comment below. In terms of the game tomorrow night, um, I'll be in the fan zone prior to the game. Come and have a chat. Um, we'll talk about the game, we'll talk about the rest of the season, talk about everything. And uh, just leave your comments below, leave any uh, likes and make sure you subscribe because Road to 1K is nearly complete. So thanks for, got, uh, thanks for watching guys, thanks for your support and until tomorrow, come on you blues.